Thanks for joining me on this Independence Week. The following is a special July the 4th episode of The Unpleasant Blind Guy recorded in 2014. Though I tend to be overly critical of my own work, I feel safe in saying that this edition contains messages that work any year, particularly the messages at the end. Enjoy. My name is Dave Milner. I am the Unpleasant Blind Guy, and I want you to know that I appreciate your spending part of your 4th of July celebration listening to this show. And to start out, I'd like to thank the person that I call the show angel for all the support she's given me since this show began. That would be Leopard Woman. And for those of you listening who haven't heard this show before, you'll be hearing Leopard Woman's name again. Trust me on that one. She helps out with stories that she finds, and she's an absolute no BS commentator and confidant. And trust me, guys, every show host you listen to has one or more of those. If we don't, there's a danger that we will succumb to living in our own echo chamber where we're right all the time and no criticism of us is legitimate. That may be okay for progressives, but it's not okay for anyone who's honest with themselves. Now, you notice that I said this is the 4th of July celebration, and I happen to be a listener to the great shows of The Underground Professor. By the way, people, give The Underground Professor a listen. You won't be disappointed. You'll learn some stuff. And the prof doesn't like for people to call this time a 4th of July celebration. He doesn't want the concept of Independence Day to be lost in the date. And I get that. We should never forget why we celebrate at this time, that we are celebrating the independence of the United States of America. We are celebrating a declaration of the people that they can govern themselves, something that is a singular historic event The reason that I call the celebrations around Independence Day, the 4th of July, though, is because I don't want Independence Day to become just another Monday holiday. A good friend of mine is Kel Fritzy, the Red Fox blogger, who hosts, produces, panels on, and is otherwise involved with about 814 different podcasts. Now, Kel is from Canada and we were discussing our mutual Independence Day celebrations, and she was saying that Canada Day, which is traditionally celebrated on July the 1st, is actually a Monday holiday, so that their government workers can have the day off and all of that. I never want Independence Day to lose its singular significance. I want people to celebrate our country's independence on July the 4th. So that's why I call it July the 4th. Now, I may term the time around July the 4th Independence Week, but I don't have a problem talking about celebrating July the 4th. Now let's get to the main story. And for those of you who are new to this program, I'm going to take a story that everyone has been talking about, and I'm going to examine it from a different angle, and hopefully one that will be helpful to you. Now, we've all heard about how Senator Thad Cochran oozed his way into victory in the Republican runoff election in Mississippi. I won't go over the details of that. There has been much talk since then, though, about overall disappointment in the establishment Republican Party on the part of conservatives and even some mainstream Republicans, both in Mississippi and in the rest of the United States of America. We've discussed by now endlessly, what was done, why it was done, how it was done. We've defined the problem all over the place. And there's been some extremely good commentary on that. One piece of particularly good commentary can be heard if you check out the archive show for Holger Awakens on Blog Talk Radio for Saturday, June the 28th. The outrage has been expressed and the problem has been defined. But as we contemplate our nation's birthday, what do we do about situations like this? How do we resolve this problem? 
How do we resolve the problem of a political party that has long since abandoned its responsibility to the people and simply embraced perpetuation of its own leader's power? In the United States of America, there is only one lawful way to do that, and that is at the polls. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to tell me that the system is corrupt, that progressives have turned voter fraud into both an art and a science, and it's not even worth it to go out and vote. You might as well just give up. There's been some talk like that, too. Now, I won't tell you what to do. There are enough people out there doing that. All I will do is advise. And my advice, as it was in January, is to research your candidates. Check out their voting records, if they have them, and then go to the polls and vote your conscience. Now, I don't know about you guys, but nothing is going to stop me from voting. I'm going to cash that check that our veterans wrote for me. To my mind, simply refusing to vote, I want to cover your uh, kids' ears, people, is equal to just rolling up on a veteran and giving them a great big bitch slap. They sacrificed a lot. And the payoff is that you and I get to go and cast a ballot. Now, is the system corrupt? I'd say it is. But there are often choices. You don't have to pick whatever establishment party candidate there is. You can write someone in. But go and cast that ballot. You say the system is corrupt. You say that society is corrupt. You say that we're going down the slippery slope into darkness. Well, maybe we are. But that's not the end. It's not the end for you. Because you will be able to hold your head up high and say you voted your conscience. You did the right thing. And that has value, people. That's not just a cheap feeling of moral self-satisfaction. That allows you to look others, your friends, your family, in the eye. And say, hey, if this government are a bunch of jerks, at least I did my duty to our country, to our veterans, and to you, family and friends. And I went out and voted. You know, there are some who think that this Cochrane victory is a sign that the United States of America is over. That the progressives have won. And that a final, irrevocable, fundamental transformation of the United States of America into a socialist crap hole has been completed. I believe that that is not true. If it looks like we're slipping into darkness now, that is only a pause for one very simple reason. The system that statists want to set up is unsustainable. Even if the entire world bows to the global socialist hegemony as they want, it is still unsustainable. You can't create value out of nothing and support billions of people who have been taught that working is for chumps. Eventually, it'll all fall down. All anyone has to do is look at countries like Venezuela and Greece, and they'll see it. The gist of what I'm saying, people, is that despite what progressives might say, conservatives have already won the day. The only thing that's happening now is a pause. There'll be a lot of pain. There'll be confusion. There'll be recriminations. There'll be bad blood. It won't be easy. I'll tell you that, guys. But we will come through, and there will be a dawn. This pause is going to last a long time. But I'm here to tell you that it won't last forever. And we can be prepared to meet the new day when it comes, because it will come. All right, now I'm going to do something that not a lot of show hosts would do. I'm going to drop one of my own promos into my own show. It's for a very worthy cause, ironic being that this is Independence Week, but I think worth it. Each year on September the 11th, ordinary citizens of the United Kingdom gather outside the United States Embassy in London. There, they show their solidarity with the people of the United States of America in remembrance of the terrorist attack on that day in 2001, the day Americans call 9-11. On July the 7th, 2005, terrorists exploded bombs in London, killing 52 people and injuring 700. 
the people of the United Kingdom called that day 7-7. To return and share love and respect with the citizens of the United Kingdom, please light up the darkness of the evening of July the 7th with seven lights. These can be seven firework rockets, seven candles, or any other kind of lights possibly arranged in a display. Then post what you've done to your favorite social media to further remember the lives lost, those injured, and the nation attacked in the 7-7 bombings. Your posts will be a call to free people everywhere that they too can be lights standing against the darkness of Islamic terrorism. Let your light of love and resolve shine this year and in years to come by marking 7 on 7-7. That's it for this time. I appreciate each and every one of you who listen. Enjoy your Independence Week celebrations. Thank you. And may your God go with you. Goodbye. The Unpleasant Blind Guy is copyright 2015, Anno Domini. Thank you.